Well, the battle over borders has reignited again between New South Wales and Queensland. One Nation leader, Pauline Hanson, has weighed in on the debate, suggesting vulnerable people should lock themselves away as she calls for all domestic borders to reopen. Join me now, the leader of One Nation, Pauline Hanson. Pauline, great to see you tonight. Uh, you're suggesting that the borders Thank should you. be reopened? Peter, I've been saying this for months, all right? Because the COVID-19, if you get the virus, doesn't mean it's a death sentence. You know, a lot of people that are dying with the coronavirus didn't die of it, but with it. So the stats are worldwide. If you are involved in a car accident, you actually test positive for coronavirus. You know what they listed as? You died from coronavirus. The last death that we had, what, a 90-year-old? Hello? The fact is that we cannot keep destroying our economy by keeping the borders shut. You know, the tourism industry is suffering. You've got other businesses suffering because of this. And um, people are absolutely scared because the media have been portraying this as a death sentence if you actually get the coronavirus. And I think it's a load of hogwash. And Pauline, the Prime Minister did come out today and say, forget about eradication. We have to live with this, but we have to take into account the economic narrative, which you know, reinforces exactly what you've just said. Peter, I have been saying this for months, right? I've been on your program and I've been saying exactly the same. I get it. I understand these people with respiratory problems, the, the aged, the vulnerable, the sick, those people, go and lock yourselves away. My daughter is in that, in that category, right? She does have respiratory problems. She does have asthma. She is taking the precautions to protect herself. But I, because my daughter's in that situation, do I say, oh, no, keep everything locked down? I don't. I tell my daughter, look after herself, but you can't shut down the country. A lot of the businesses are going under. And I tell people, they won't start up again. They've had it. The nail's in the coffin. So if you think you're going to have a job to go back to, think twice about it, because you won't. And if you think the government can keep you on job keeper, job seeker indefinitely... Think again, it's not going to happen because the taxpayers out there, you cannot run this country with a limited amount of money without going in further in debt that is going to put so much pressure on future generations. So I'm telling you, Australia, wake Paul up. We have to live with this because we don't have a vaccine for it. Pauline, uh, pop stars, protesters, they're treated differently in Queensland to others. I mean, we've had a recent case over the weekend, two nightclub owners, probably doing it really tough, fined seven grand each for allowing people to have a dance. And yet Danny Minogue applies to Jeanette Young, Premier Young, uh, to try and uh, uh, get an exemption so that she can quarantine at home rather than, rather than in a hotel and pay the three grand. And she gets the exemption. What's going on? Well, it is. Look... Peter, I, I've, I've two different uh, opinions here on both these cases. You know, there was that um, the hotel owner out in the west. She's between um, Miles and Roma, right? So because the police went in there and they they said that she didn't have she had salt peppers on the on the counter, or and they actually fined her over. $6,000, nearly $7,000 in fines. I think it was ridiculous what they're doing because she's on her knees and about to go under. Then we have, you know, the nightclub owner because people dance. I think it's just absolutely ridiculous and over the top. As far as Danny Minogue goes, I've got no problems with her self-isolating in her own home. She's paying for security at her place. Peter, people of high profile in this country, can you imagine Danny Minogue now goes out to walk around Brisbane or in the streets, who will report her? The general public, because they all know she's supposed to be in self-isolation. Mm. But you have these people in hotels. We have no idea who they are. We have no idea if they're actually walking through the hotel, going through the, to the restaurants, going out to do the shopping, which they That's were. Right. We have no idea who they are. We know who Danny Minogue is. We know that she's locked down. I've got no problem with it. She's paying for the security at her home. All right, let's talk a bit about this mandatory sentencing bill. I had Mark Latham on last night. He was very strong on this, Pauline. We've had situations in recent weeks where people have walked free from the courts, suspended sentences, after belting, assaulting uh, police officers, female police officers. You're calling for mandatory sentencing of anyone 
who lays their hand on a police officer. The three strikes and out rule. Well, it has to be, you know, um, for the mandatory and sentencing with regards to that, because we have to protect those people, the, the police officers, because they are protecting us as a society. And we are just disrespecting them if we don't say to those thugs out there, those people who have no respect for the law and authority, and we have the idiots out there from the Black Lives Matter movement who actually worldwide saying, get rid of the police. Well, I'm sorry, as soon as you get rid of the police, you're going to have these thugs, these criminals, these people who are going to make your life hell and they can do whatever they want to do. So it's about ensuring that we protect those people who look after us, that we have a safe society. I know that the, the general feeling of the public is they appreciate what the police do for us, and I appreciate it as well. You have some of those that go rogue at different times, but in general, the police force is something, and I'll call it the force, that uh, we need them, we need to look after them, and uh, I'm all for this mandatory sentencing. So if they want to have a go at them, then you know, you'll, you'll, fool the, you'll feel the full brunt of the law against you. Now, former Queensland Deputy Premier and Treasurer Jackie Trad, she's in the news again. She's been referred to the Triple C again. She doesn't seem to have much luck with the Triple C, this time over the appointment of her former top bureaucrat. She's also been to the Triple C over the purchase of a house. She was cleared on that. She went to the Triple C over the appointment of a school principal within her electorate. She was cleared of that. But she's in the news again. She's been referred to the Triple C again. She, uh, she's probably on first term, uh, first name basis. Uh, with those who are investigating her right now? You know what? It's the LNP. They're the ones that have referred her three times now, and yet the LNP gave her their preferences at the last election above the Greens. They're not going to do it this time. They're going to preference the Greens above the uh, Jackie Trad. So, you know what? The people of, of, of Australia are sick and tired of the politics that goes on within politics, the gutter politics. What we, people want to hear from the LNP is not this personally, and it is personal vendetta to go after Jackie Trad. Let me make it quite clear. I don't like Jackie Trad. I don't like her politics. I don't want to see her in the Queensland Parliament, but I'll make it quite clear. But the fact is, we're coming into an election, Peter. What people want to hear from the LNP is real policy to pull this state out of the huge debt that we have. Tell the people of Queensland what you are going to do to help them. Forget about putting all your time and efforts and energy in trying to go after Jackie Trad. So that's what I say. Pauline Hanson, thank you. Uh, yeah, no, no. I appreciate all that. I mean, uh, you know, you're right, it is a vendetta. But at the end of the day, she's been hauled before the Triple C. This is the third time, so it'll be interesting to see whether she gets on. Peter, on I know what offer. vendettas are because I had, I had the Labor Party and I actually had Tony Abbott come after me on politics, right? Let the people decide. Mm. And the whole fact is, and I have no problems, that if you've done the wrong thing as a politician, you must be answerable to the public. But this is the third time the Liberal Party have gone after her. You know, let's start hearing from the Liberal Party. What are you going to do for Queensland? There she is, a fired up Pauline Hanson. Thanks for joining us from your scenic rim base tonight. Thanks, Peter. My pleasure. Thank you.